loud, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just naturally loud as shit. All right, man, we live. It's your boys, Oda Session, Session Podcast. We in the building with Professor Pizza. How's it going, man? How you doing? Good. Welcome to my apartment. Thank you. Welcome to the Session Podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I just took a super dab. I'm a little floated. A super, super dab for a super guy. For a super, gu- for a super interview. That's right. <laughs> this is a great guy, man. This is my guy, Anthony. Great guy. If you're from Chicago, at this point, you know him. If you're from the north side, at this point, you've been to his restaurant. Um, great guy, specializing in pizza. Talk to me, man. Let us know. How did you get started in pizza? Pizza was something that was just one of those foods I started playing around with at home as a kid. Like, I would say high school years, right? It was Mm. one of those things that, like, came right after the era of me playing around with George Foreman grills and making paninis and burgers and things like that. And I uh, eventually ventured into pizza and some of the most humble recipes I could find online at the time through, I think, Serious Eats Stop Pizza. Mm. And it was a lot of same-day pan pizza doughs. And it was just fun, right? I had an opportunity to make it for friends and family and do it totally different than I would do it today, of course, like anything, but just get my start somewhere making pizza for those around me. And I enjoyed it and eventually... Grabbed a series of different jobs in the restaurant industry, doing all sorts of different things. But always having that in my background is something that I enjoy doing, mm-hmm. right? Um, I guess I'm step- skipping some steps here. I went to school for music business at uh, Columbia, didn't finish, and eventually went out uh, west to uh, California and actually got into medical cannabis or attempted to Mm -hmm. uh got in trouble sending it back home is what really happened (laughs) and had to get out of that so got out of that and came back and started working in restaurants at that point Mm -hmm. right um and one of my first restaurant jobs was at a pizzeria Mm -hmm. in waukegan called fiamico's and it was wood-fired pizza and i Got an opportunity to play around with different combinations and just really celebrate my heritage as an Italian-American with this Italian-American family that was opening the place at the time, right? Nice. Yeah, and I, I loved it and kept seeking jobs in the industry that were pizza based. Uh, worked for a variety of different pizzerias from... Forno Rosso, which was the Neapolitan section uh, of pizza in Italy, mm-hmm. um, uh, doing street festivals with my bu- buddy Gianni Gallucci, um, which uh, now he's got a spot across the intersection for me doing some of the best Neapolitan pizza in this city called Gallucci's. Nice. Um, worked at uh, Coal Fire, worked at Pauly G's. Uh, worked at Formentos, and and there mm. I was really more focused in on pasta, and it's it's pretty cool actually. It's a full circle moment because at the time, my chef there was a guy named Tony Carano, and he's got a spot in the city now, Gemma Foods, off of uh, what is it? Uh, and is that May May or Grand in May right there mm-hmm. next to Damato's? And uh, he's making some of the best handmade pasta in the city, and and we're lucky to be serving it on our menu today. Nice. Um, so you really uh, learned how to be a really like well-rounded chef more than just pizza, too. Yeah, I I did just because I, I knew I needed to learn how to cook, right? And I think a lot of guys know how to make pizza and, and make a sauce and make a dough, but they don't know the fundamentals of cuisine and the organization of a kitchen. And I wanted to learn those fundamentals. I actually, when coming back, I need some water myself, actually. Oh, yeah, let's oh, yeah, take your time. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. That's what happens yeah. with these take sessions. Your, this is what happens when the, these blunts come around. <laughs> yeah, let me, see, let me do that. Sorry. Take your time. I'm hearing myself fade. <laughs> Here, let's get you a fresh, get you a glass so we can take, you know, it be that way. <laughs> hey, it be that way. Snuck up on me. Nah, yeah, that's why I t- <laughs> I'm glad you pulled it out for me right away. Like, yeah, <laughs> it be like that, bro. 
Trust me, I've done. I think I took, I took one feet. hit, but it's it takes a trained palate for the backwoods. Dude, sure. that was like yeah, it takes all right, a yeah. You told me, and he literally. I mean, when I say tap the backwood, I really, really literally did. was like. Because I knew, I, I've got respect for it, and I know what it can do to me. I, that was my college years. I used, I used to roll them and, uh, uh-huh. you know, devein them, and, you know, you, you're lucky to get four out of ten yeah, in a pack. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I know that. I know yeah, it. I know and it. I'm not a huge dabber, but I ripped that dab, and I probably caught for 60 I think we seconds both straight. wanted to be on uh E- and on equal playing field. Hey, no, nah, I love dabs. Do like, don't get it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I dead ass love no, dabs. I, I was like, we should share this, and you're like, yeah, no problem, we will. And then ninety nine percent of it went. He's dying. Ninety nine percent of it went down. I was like, you know what? Kudos. I actually, I'm okay right now. Um, Great. All right, we back at it. Yeah. But um, learning about being like a, a, a more well rounded chef, other than just pizza. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, coming back from California, I, I got into this program in the Garfield Park neighborhood of Chicago, mm-hmm. west side of Chicago, called uh, Inspiration Kitchens, which was a division of a larger organization, community outreach organization called Inspiration Corporation, right? And that was started by uh, a female police officer sometime in the 80s. I don't know the full history of it, but somewhere along the line, they started uh, Inspiration Kitchens, and I believe it started originally in Uptown, but the one I ultimately went to was in Garfield Park. Mm -hmm. And it was a soul food restaurant open to the public where the cooks uh, were the students of the culinary program in the same building. So it gave me a lot of fundamentals, and it got me uh, or exposed me to the concept of staging, which is like a French uh, tradition where... You go in for an elongated period of time to a restaurant Mm -hmm. and work for free in hopes to learn and hopes to one day, it's like an internship, an unpaid internship, (coughs) hopes to one day, you know, get a job. Um, And luckily in the American sense, a stage could be one or two shifts. Mm -hmm. Uh, In in the fine dining world, it could still be up to a month, but a lot of that's changed, and a lot of these stages are now getting paid, but I was definitely still part of that era of, like, unpaid staging. And, um, yeah, it it led to opportunities, and I worked in a variety of different restaurants in the city, and that was, like, more so the time where I wasn't necessarily always working in a pizzeria, Mm -hmm. right? I was working at places like Table Donkey and Stick and El Chabal, uh, fermentos really more so doing pasta than anything um and and, and just like learning yeah. um and was lucky to do so it was, it was hard and i i made no money and eventually got burnt out around the time i was working at uh uh pqm public and quality meats uh in in what would become fulton market although it was like at the very like cusp of that then mm-hmm. um and yeah, like I said, just just learned a lot, but eventually got burnt out, spent 10 months in commercial real estate with my father thinking nice. like, <coughs> hey, let me learn the business from a different angle and maybe make some money along the way and yeah. maybe one day I'll open up a restaurant, but from the maybe up back in. Right. I need to make some money doing something else first. Right. And like tried it, did it for 10 months and like learned a lot but like didn't like it enough to want to stick with it. Mm. Um that's and fair. And ultimately wanted to get back into the kitchen. Yeah. Um, so I did. And I'm trying to remember now, like, what was the job at the time I did. But uh, either way, started cooking again, started making pizza again. Um, eventually worked at a place called Dobro's. That might have been the next stop. But, uh, yeah. Worked at a place called Dobro's that I manage, which is a New York style slice joint. Still is. Nice. Uh, I like River New York North. style slices. Yeah, I ain't absolutely. Front. I just low key like you know being from Chicago, we got our little styles, and I like tavern style the most. A hundred percent. But I just well, got into the New York style. Pizza, G. We uh, you know, we celebrate many different styles, including tavern and yeah, New York. I know. Right? So yeah, um, yeah, this was my first opportunity to see like late night. And high volume slice business, right. right? And there's not a lot of it here in the city. No, but they're one of the spots that has been doing it for a while now, and um, really doing it right. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I cut my teeth there with the New York style and, and, and with filling a slice case every day and doing multiple styles, adding in Sicilian and Grandma and Detroit um, and building the basis for what would become Professor Pizza. Nice. Right? So did that for a while. By the end of that, we we got hit with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Now, right before mm-hmm. we got hit with the pandemic, I should like backtrack a little bit just to say – my buddy Izzy and I, Izzy Perez, um, we met at Dobro's. He was a cook there. He had already been cooking there and kind of, like, showed me the ropes and then some and helped, like, get me going uh, and, like, even fronted me some money to, like, get some of these initial pop-ups going that we did at Emporium Word. and a handful of different places in the city. And we did that stuff together, and he's working with me to this day, just, like, crushing it at our West Loop location. But um, started with the pop-up, started getting some motion there. And then, like I said, we got hit with the pandemic. Um, right right before the pandemic hit, I was phasing out of Dobro's and trying to open something with Jimmy Banos Jr. in uh, what was Well Street Market in that first kind of initial phase of food halls mm-hmm. kind of catching storm. And we were in the process of just starting to build something out. We just finalized all the plans and the pandemic really hit sidetracked all of that. And I found myself at home like everybody else. Yeah. Just (coughs) watching, you know, Tiger King and Mm -hmm. rewatching the Sopranos. Like everybody else was doing doing just what everybody else (laughs) was doing, (laughs) you know, live streams on uh, Instagram were pretty lit with the DJ sets Mm -hmm. and boiler room was taken off and all of that. Um, Hey, quarantine was a little time. It was. It was. You gotta appreciate what quarantine was. It was. It was a pivotal time for me. Pivotal time for a lot of people. Um, Because eventually I got burnt out on that and I realized like, look, like, I'm at this point, you know, we skipped a couple steps in the story, yeah, but yeah. you know, at this point, I'm a world pizza champion. I'm a member of this team that uh, my my key mentor Tony Gemignani uh, inducted me into and started. Um, who's based in San Francisco and who I spent some time out there learning from. But uh, you know, I, I'm this world pizza champion, and I'm I'm at home doing nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, collecting these checks and just like sitting on my ass and like. It sounds fun when when you never get a break, yeah. but after a while, that shit gets that old. Itch. Yeah, that itch, and man. and you want to activate yourself again. Yeah, and so I thought, like, how can I sell or start even making pizzas? Or like, you know, this is in the craze of the sourdough culture mm-hmm. and sourdough bread, mm-hmm. and you know, everybody's trying to do some sort of baked good or whatever at home. That's what because quarantine Because we can do those did. with rations or whatever. <laughs> yep, you yep, know? yep, yep, um, How can you prepare for doomsday? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And yeah. I was like, look, mm-hmm. I'm not swept up in all that hoopla necessarily, but I am a pizza maker by trade. I should be making pizza. I should be making focaccia or something. And that's ultimately what I started doing. I was like, look, it's going to be too expensive. I'm not going to have enough space to store all these pizza v- ingredients. Let's just start making focaccia with a couple of pans I have and, like, put it up as a post on Facebook saying, hey, I'm doing this. Like, if anyone wants to come through and scoop one, like, you pick your price, whatever right. you think it's worth, mm. you know? And I got a nice little response and I started doing it. And it just like literally in that moment gave me like some purpose outside of like seeing my kids who I was also like kind of quarantined from in those initial stages because you didn't know like how serious anything was or whatever. But um, anyways, people started coming through for focaccias. That lasted like two days and then i was like you know what fuck it like let's just figure out a way to make some pizza here. yeah yeah you know and again went to facebook went to instagram and started to post like hey until i sell out you know i think i've got this many pizzas like i think i sold 16 in the first weekend mm-hmm. weekend after that maybe 25 weekend after that like 60 weekend after that like 85 and then i was like okay we got something here Mm -hmm. and i'm doing this out of my apartment like i'm on craigslist 
like, grabbing U-Hauls for used refrigerators to, like, lug into my garden apartment. Yeah. And, you know, Home Depot to get the little dorm fridges. Mm -hmm. And I got a couple going and a whole bedroom. And I've turned a bedroom into, a like, into a Into a shop, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, on, on top of what I already had, and I already had this, like, one deck smaller, like, c commercial oven, but still definitely a commercial oven. Yeah. And I had my... um my uh father-in-law essentially like his uh, electrical company mm. come in and rig an outlet for it yeah and it would cause the, the lights to, to pop. like pop yeah yep. and so i'd have to run the apartment like with the lights off and the doors open so yep. nothing overheated yep. and it was just crazy fans man. and circulation it was yeah. just crazy yeah, yeah all sorts of fans for sure yeah fans. i know what you know yeah box fans and uh -huh. stuff and like you're still like in sweatshop conditions in this apartment in hermosa mm -hmm. you know yeah um people coming through for carry out and then eventually that turns into my friends uh, helping out with delivery, and now we got a bootleg. Now we got a little going, your dick going. You yeah, know? hey, that sounds we're, so. We're lit. trapping pizzas, bro. That sounds like a movie uh, plot, G. It, it it will be one day. Oh it man, will be one this day. is crazy. Nah, literally. Yeah. Thank uh, you, one hundred percent. So, so we do that, and we do that for I don't know, however many weeks we can pull that off yeah. for, and eventually we start to get scared that like, God forbid, like. Somebody has an allergy, they get sick, yeah. whatever they say, mm -hmm. I got this from my house. Like, then the feds do a sweep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't need, need, like, a pizza like Rico. Yeah. <laughs> nah, and, for real. Like, and you know it's crazy, yeah, though. That'd yeah. be, like, the shit you see on the news, like, So I, I kind of shit. anticipated it coming, and I was like, I I desperately have to find a place. Yeah. And we're just outgrowing it, too. Yeah, 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 You course. know, so it was like, it wasn't sustainable, and we yeah. knew it. You can't like, have a line of folks at, at your apartment. No, like, like no. if you saw my apartment at that time, like... I, I was using my ironing board as yeah. a table, like, mm -hmm. for boxes that we were building in there. Um, you had a whole you know, pizza shop. Like, I had a whole I had a whole pizza shop in my apartment. That's like, so dope. Like, barely had a bedroom. Barely. That's so dope. You like, know? get up right to it. Yeah. That yeah. is so dope, yeah, bro. That's yeah, literally yeah, chasing yeah, yeah. the dream right it there. Was, if you're I, not I'm glad I'm your not in that in, place like, anymore, nah, but nah, when I say it now, it's like there is something sweet about those times for sure. Of course there was. Yeah. Like, if you're not grinding that hard about yeah. your passion, yeah. you almost don't really want it. I, yeah, I really want it. You feel me? It. You, really, you really, really wanted, wanted it, it, so you made yeah. it your life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 and yeah. that's like, like look at like look at what we're doing now and talking about and you it. It should be it's noted. Insane. Any pizza ingredients I bought at that time, I bought with those government checks. Yeah. You know? And mm -hmm. so, like, I think people, like, underestimate how hard it is to go from, like, mm -hmm. day job to even having the time to focus on your own mm -hmm. reality and then having the money to put behind yep. the motion in, in your mind yep. and, and turn it into a reality. And, like, I, I don't know if I couldn't could have done it without that time off that was the mm -hmm. pandemic and those couple of checks that, yeah. like, I was able to throw into that at the time. Um, COVID for a lot of creative either, like, creatives either made or break, broke them because yeah. you did get a lot of time, but, like, I know for me with my podcast, that was a lot of time where I was able to sit, rethink my image, for sure. like, come up with things, learn how to edit for so sure. I could not pay anybody, learn how to shoot, learn how to use cameras. Like, I took time to really learn yeah. my crafts, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that way now it's, like, really starting to pay off. I'm now monetized and things like that so we can keep it moving, you know what I'm that. saying? So Congrats it took it that. took a while, G. It took yeah. a long time. But COVID was, like, one of those turning points of, like, hey, yo, you need to either wake up and do something because what's going to happen when – the job you work closed down for sure. You could, and it got to the point where it's like when you wake up at every day for like a month or two, just and fuck off. It's like this really is not fun anymore. It's not healthy. It's not, and, and yeah, and you're the worst version of yourself. You're literally a bum at that point to yeah. yourself. You just, yeah. I felt, I feel that, right? and I felt that literally, and you know, it was great for the first two weeks or whatever. Yeah, three vacation, weeks, whatever, you know, but. You also saw the limitations of the world, too. So yeah. it's not like you're in normal vacation yeah. territory yeah. either. So it came to a point where it's like, I got to go back to doing what I know how to do here yeah. and expand upon it. And I was lucky to have 
you know, a handful of people uh, get behind me um, and, 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 and get it going with me. So now let's backtrack a little bit before we get into uh, Professor Pizza, like the restaurant we sure. know it as today. Sure, um, And you mentioned, you know, messing around with pizzas in high school. Right. What was the point in your life where you, if you, as far back as you can remember, where you knew, like, kind of, like, food was what, like, like you know, maybe started as a hobby, but you you showed a true interest in food. Yeah. Uh, I like that question, you know, because it's a different answer, right? Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> I grew up Italian American household, like my like full blown Italian American household. Like. Yeah, like I, I, I definitely think there's a spectrum to it, and I even, I even joke that I'm, you know, American Italian instead of Italian American because you see some of these families on the East Coast, and like it was the handmade pasta and every say Sunday. That, uh, okay, and fine. They never okay, missed a Sunday gravy dinner. Yeah, no, talk to me. Like, it's like we had some of that stuff. But, like, there does become this cultural divide where over the years and over the generations, it relaxes more and more so, and and the culture dies, which is, like, why that's at the center of my brand is making sure it doesn't die and that we can celebrate it and build upon it. Yeah, because it mixes with American culture. American culture is, like, a lot of cultures at once. And And I've never been to Italy to this day, and people are, like, their minds blown by that, and it's like, you know— it's hard to get out there, and it's hard to get out there when I, I'm running spots here. I've got two kids. I've got all sorts of responsibilities here, and, like, my finances are wrapped up in, like, making this reality work for me now. Yeah. Right? So I think it'll happen, you know, in its own time, in the right time. But um, my experience and my story is uniquely Italian-American, not, like, yeah. Italian-Italian, right? So that's what the... Uh, Professor Pizza brand is built on, and that's at the core of my earliest food memories, right? So I talk about having that ethnic background, but having parents that met while my father was managing the food and beverage for a country club in Mm -hmm. Round Lake at the time. Uh, His family had a catering operation at that Mm. time. Years before that, they had a variety of different restaurants, I think four different restaurants at the same time on the same block. You know, different concepts, right? From pizzeria to corner store to sit down kind of like uh, American bistro. Um, It it was those sort of places, right? In the... the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and, and catering into the 80s and 90s, even when I was young. And and then my father eventually got into commercial real estate and phased out of food, but, like, my uncle was still in it. Yeah. And he had a hot dog and Euro stand in uh, R- Richmond, Illinois, and then it became Twin Lakes, Wisconsin. And then in the summers, he would run this even smaller stand out of an uh, American legion or uh, what is it yeah the american legion hut or something i think is what it was um or canteen and and that was outside of the beach entrance at lake geneva and that that little like summer hut that he ran there is at the very core i would say of my food memories Mm. because when we all had an opportunity to run down to the beach all i wanted to do is stay up there with my uncle and my cousins at the time and like stand on a crate and fill sodas Fire. you know and Fire. like yeah, i couldn't do anything that kitchen else, atmosphere really. though i might be able to take the chips <coughs> from downstairs and like put them up on the mm. on the racks outside and kind of wipe it down mm. and whatever greek guests whatever but fill lemonades that's what i got a chance to do and like no one was asking me to do it but yeah. like they knew that that's what i wanted to do yeah um and i'd look forward to it yeah. so earliest food memory nice. for sure now nice. so it sounds like you've already you've always memory. yeah you've had those hospitality backgrounds those for atmospheres sure. just sure. kind of embedded in you yeah. early before you were even born and you, you yeah. know so it's in your dna and it's encoded in you. I, th- I feel that way yeah that's sure. fire that's yeah. actually really dope yeah. um and so now looking forward after you know putting your time in working at all these different restaurants traveling coast to coast learning different styles you yeah. know learning different things um how did Professor Pizza the restaurant now become come into play? Yeah, so it, it 
it was a slow and steady rise, and it did start with the pop-ups with Izzy before the pandemic, and then the transition into the apartment, and then we get out of the apartment. We spend literally maybe two, three weeks tops out of Hermosa Restaurant, um, uh, which is owned by a friend, uh, Ethan of mine, or a friend of mine named Ethan, rather, um, and, uh, he does fantastic, uh, he does fantastic food there, but he was kind enough to, to let me crash there for a while and run the pop-up out of there, but it was really tense times, uh, in the neighborhood and in the city and in the country at that time with what was going on with George Floyd and, Unfortunately, a shop got like shot up at the time oh, in in the chaos of all of that, yeah. and um, you know they just kind of had to go back to business as usual. But I, you know, he still gave me a place to hang my hat in that time, and I'm forever grateful. Um, and from there, I transitioned over to another shop. Uh, what was the full shilling at the time next to the Metro Theater in Wrigleyville? Nice and. That was owned by a buddy of mine, uh, Alex Zupanzik, and uh, a- Alex and I still talk and at times work together to this day, but he owns a variety of different restaurants and bars in the city, and I did some, I, I did some consulting for him way back in like 2017 even, um, uh, helping him with like wood-fired pizza, and then it became Chicago Cracker Thin Pizza, and... Mm. He called me up and he said, I got this spot in Wrigleyville. It's been closed since St. Patty's Day. Uh, we have this opportunity to reopen it. But the city is mandating that if we sell liquor, we also, we also have to sell or provide for the opportunity uh, for food. For food, right, 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 right. I know about that. Um, yep. so Which is he, a fire law. Right. <laughs> it's fire. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and he said, we've got this kitchen there, but... You know, I had to lay everybody off. I don't have any cooks working there or anything. Yeah. We don't so have the hands. We don't have the hands. Kitchen's there. If if you want to use it, you can use it and uh, and run your, your pop-up online out of there. You just got to be able to serve pizza or something yeah. to the patrons in the bar. So I... I started doing the online pop-up out of there, which at the time I was running through TAC. And, and that's just an, a reservation system that initially started out for fine dining restaurants, but a lot of people started using it in the pandemic for their food operations okay. that they were running out of, whether it was their closed down restaurants or their homes or whatever the case might have been. In this case, we were running it out of the back of the sports bar in Wrigleyville. And it, it took off. And I was really lucky at the time that the city was very into supporting small businesses and supporting people and yeah. hospitality and getting because they would have lost that a lot of put them. good food out there. Yeah, they would have lost yeah. a lot. You know, I mean, certainly for my friends that already had restaurants and already had operations up and running, it was a really, especially tough, tough I time for them yeah. because. In many cases, the bills didn't really stop. Yeah, you know the the revenue stopped. You the could get extensions stopped. here or there, yeah, but it wasn't. It, it, it. I mean, as we know, plenty didn't make it. Yeah, and there's still that wake of places that have been a shell of their former self uh, since the pandemic and are still kind of closing because of the after effects of it. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah literally, some places know. made it past it and. You know? Never could get back over that. Absolutely, hump. even yeah. some big names. No, for sure, yeah. for sure. So I was lucky that I didn't have all the overhead, and I had these unique scenarios where I could make any amount of money at all. Yeah. Right. Um. Did that for nearly two years out of that space, mm. and then um, I linked up with this guy that I became friends with. Uh, back in my Dobro's days when I was managing Dobro's because they needed a piece of equipment like this pizza make table and it was my job to source it and, and get it purchased and, mm. and, and follow through with the, you know, install of it, so to speak. And the guy that I reached out to at Olympic store fixtures was this guy, Grant Johnson. 
and he helped me every step of the way. And we realized at some point that we knew each other through a variety of different avenues of life. Essentially, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. His mother was my grade school art teacher, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, rest in power. Love you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah. Uh, and, you know, years years previous, I had... I was I was in the DJ business, always lugging around equipment, doing yeah, something. Yeah, I see, you know? man. You got the whole uh, bang. And I had, I had DJed another neighbor of ours' wedding, and he was at that wedding. So oh, fire! He's always kind of like kind of been in the background. A of universal my link up, yeah. Right, right. And in those Dobro's days, he could see this slice case I was putting together every day. Mm -hmm. He knew what the place was before I got there. He, you know. He knows that it's not quite what it was since I've been there, yeah. or since I haven't been there, I should say. Um, and he told me in those days, like, look, one of these days, you're going to get an opportunity to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And I know you're going to get that opportunity either way, but I'd love to give you that opportunity yeah. one of these days. He's like, I'm not really ready to do it now, but who in knows? In the back end. Maybe one day something like that will happen. Yeah, And it was like, a really flattering thing for him to say at the time, but it was like it was like he said, he's like, I'm not ready to do that now, but like, boy, I see the talent and like I, I wish I could. Years years later, this spot opens up Lardone, which is by uh Boiler Room mm -hmm. in uh, Logan Square, uh off um California. And I get invited to the friends and family because I'm friends with the chef, and I go to it. And when I go to it, I run into Grant. And there's, like, two different sessions of it. And I, I'm on my way out, and he's on his way in. Mm -hmm. And we bump into one another, and we start to catch up. And he's like, so how's everything going with you and Jimmy Banos? Because he had heard that I was, you know, I had left Dobro's, and I, I was going to open up something in the well, uh, in Wall Street Market with Jimmy Banos. And I said, well, it never came to be, and you know, whatever, whatever. I, I, I've got this pop-up going on, but I'm definitely, like, looking to bring things to the next level. I, I can't be in the back of the sports bar forever, Yeah. you know. But I don't have the money to, like, really bring it to the yeah. next level yet, you know. We're just kind of making enough to, like, just barely reinvest, you yeah. know, and just keep it moving and keep the, like, the motion and the hype rolling yeah. until we figure out what's next. A landing spot. You know, whatnot, honestly. Yeah. Um so he's like, well, look, I kind of thought you were linked up with Jimmy, but if you've got availability and you want to sit down and have that conversation, I'm more ready to have that conversation than I've ever been. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I definitely do. Green light. And yeah. we had that conversation, I don't know if it was 24 hours later, man. Yeah. You know, but it's it went from that to a tasting of what would become an initial menu mm -hmm. and a signing of a lease in a ghost kitchen space in Humboldt Park. Fire. Um, and that ghost kitchen space at the time was called the Humboldt Park Eatery. It was owned by Cloud Kitchens. It's no longer open, but it was these ghost kitchens that was you know, a big thing that was popping up mm -hmm. over the pandemic was yeah. like, oh yeah, where you could like order a bunch of places. Yep. Yeah, 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 See, yeah, 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 yeah. The first wave before the pandemic. Okay. That's Ooh. right. This happens all the time. Yeah, it's all good. Um, the first wave before the pandemic was food halls. Right. right? Everybody thought food halls were going to take over the world, and there's still some decent ones. Timeout's pretty dope and yeah. whatever, but like, really, food halls weren't what you know people gravitated towards right. in mass over time, right? Um, and then it became ghost kitchens. And then the world, thankfully, opened back up again, and people were like, no, we want to go back to restaurants. Yeah. You know? People didn't shy away from it too long. Absolutely. At least in Chicago. Absolutely. We, we ready. But we were in this ghost kitchen, and this was the time where I got a chance to meet my boy Henry Kai of Three Little Pigs, uh, 3LP nowadays, right? And uh, Henry makes some of the best Cantonese, Chinese food in the city with an American twist, doing things like salt and pepper uh, fried chicken sandwiches, mm -hmm. uh, uh, char siu pork boxes, fried rice, like some of the best Rangoons in the city. I mean, he's just like 
does incredible work. And we bonded over being in a similar place, pretty much the exact same place, actually, place in our careers, Mm -hmm. going after the same things. And, and in fact, and he likes to always joke that, like, we were up for the same, like, I don't know, uh, Chicago Tribune Ghost Kitchen Award thing, and Mm -hmm. I won it, and who's this Tony Scardino guy who Mm -hmm. won my award? (laughs) And then we met, and, like, of course, we become the best of friends, right? Um, But uh, stay tuned for Kaidino Express. Mm. The yeah, Henry Kai and yeah, Tony that. Scardino podcast. Yes, sir. Coming to a streamer near you soon. And by streamer, I mean YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw I saw some of the artwork and shit. That shit looks yeah, fire, yeah, bro. It yeah, looks yeah, like it's going to yeah. be a great yeah, time. Yeah. And if y'all yeah, are we'll talking food and shit longer. too, bro, yeah. oh, man, it's going to be We're beautiful. talking everything. We're talking yeah. food. We're talking fashion. We're talking passion. We're talking friendship. It'll be so dope. Uh, we're talking wait. inspiration. We're talking highs. We're talking lows. Yeah. Um, we're talking... Uh, so I'd love to have you on as a guest. Oh, hell yeah. So I'm yeah, definitely going to down to come through for 100%. sure. Yeah. But yeah, we, we linked and, and became close there and, and ever since, but that was a stop on, on the train to the, I don't want to say at the top, but to, certainly to where we are now. And the next step was getting into some sort of real brick and mortar. Mm. Right. And we still didn't have unlimited capital to do that, but we wanted to like get into that realm to the best of our ability and looked at a bunch of different places and eventually settled in on this place called Recess. Mm -hmm. There was a former pizzeria in their beer garden, which is made up of shipping containers called Bob's Pizza. Bob's Pizza is still around and super successful with a handful of locations throughout the city, Pilsen-style pizza. Mm. Um... But they were in this uh, uh, shipping container concept outside. They had left it. It was vacant. We had an opportunity to go into it. We signed a sublease with them. And at the last minute, without, you know, talking any particulars, although you can do your own research, uh, the rug was pulled from beneath us. We were not uh, uh, granted approval for our sublease. Mm. And even though we had moved all of our equipment in there, we were not allowed to sell out of there or operate out of there. So, um, fucking regulations, man. We were stuck. Absolutely, man. Regulations in real estate Mm -hmm. is really what it comes down to. Um, And and people that are far richer than myself. But um, either way, we were in a predicament where for like four months we weren't open and we had a, you know, a staff of people that we had from uh, the Ghost Kitchen mm. and Humboldt Park. Not a huge staff, but a staff nonetheless yeah. that we had to try and keep afloat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, all the credit in the world to Grant, he was able to do so and, and, and keep money in our pockets in that super uncertain time and uh, get us over to what ultimately ended up being where we are now, which is 406 North Sangamon. And that is kind of this hybrid between ghost kitchen and seasonal rooftop. You know, we go from in the cold months having zero seats Mm. to uh, in the nicer, warmer weather months having seating for 275 with cabanas, Full bar, mm. DJ, sweeping views of the West Loop. And that space is called Tetto, which is Italian for rooftop. And Oh, uh, that's right by the spot. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. I got a slide. Yep, yep, oh, yep. Oh, for sure, for sure. Definitely do slide because uh, before you know it, sum- summer will be behind us. Yeah. And that space will transition almost certainly back into a carryout and delivery hub for us. Okay. Um, although we'll uh, announce more as we get to that mm. uh, time of the year. But uh, it's... It's a fantastic time up there. If you're familiar with House Calls, mm-hmm. they have an ongoing series up there with oh, us. Um, okay. They're actually going to, I mean, this will come out, I don't know when, but they'll be there again this sun, uh, fire, Sunday. Fire, fire. Um, I know exactly that. And them. it's it's, Abby it's a vibe. Yeah, yeah, Vic yeah, yeah. Mensa just uh, oh. hosted his second event up there, too. Okay, cool. I was there this past, I want to say Sunday as well, and that was... Another incredible showing. Nice. Um, I think it was like, what is that, the 96 boys or yeah, something? Yeah, 93 boys. 93 boys, yep. thank you. Yep. Um, but, um, yeah, it's a great spot. Dope. So we're up there in our second season now. Cool. And then I, I'm starting to lose it week by week track, but it's been about, you know, 
three and a half, three, three and a half months now since we've opened up. Excuse me. Our old town space mm. uh, attached to Second City at 1610 North Wells Street at Wells and North Avenue. And I love that location. Uh, look, bro. So I, I, I do too, man. We're, we're blessed to have it. The neighborhood's really uh, supported and embraced us in a big way. Uh, what we've been able to do to the facade and the interior of the building yeah, so is something that I'm really proud of. And I always tell people, we're just getting started. Train, yeah. It's not like a 747. Yeah, gee, oh, There's yeah. No you trains know, over here. Yeah, that's the, the fucking air and water show. Okay. That's it. You're right. You're damn near okay. right. You're on point. Because the air, I saw that shit driving past, and I'm like, bro, what? What's happening? I was happening? about to brace for impact And someone told there. me. Yeah, no, uh, there's an air and water show. But, uh,. What was I saying? I can't remember now. Uh, just the aesthetic of the building yeah, yeah, and how they accepted a, you and everything. Yeah, we've been able to put a lot of love into the space and truly transform it into, you know, kind of uh, an homage to my Italian-American upbringing and my love for pizza and my love for stand-up comedy. And um, it's it's something that I, I tell people we're just growing into, we're just moving into, and the space is going to evolve uh, and expand and really become our own more so and more so over time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're, we're excited to make our mark and, and be there for a long time, hopefully. No, it's actually, I mean, if you guys have not been able to be at that location, see it, the photos I've seen, I was able to, like, be there. I wasn't, wasn't able to make it, but my lady was. And okay, every, fantastic. You know, and she loved it. She It, it was a beautiful thing. She, I saw pictures of her there when she was there. So I'm like, damn, we got to get out there. I really want to get out there so I can go see what's good Amazing. to the restaurant. Because, you know, I love the pizzas, bro. And, like, I, w I hated it because at the time I was on a serious diet, like, serious diet. When I, I would come through the blind, yeah, blind bro, barber. Yeah, slide yeah. by. And I was fucking, I lost 40 pounds now, so now I'm back on bullshit. It. I'm like, I can I eat and maintain. <laughs> like, I'm good you now. Great, you feel brother. me? Thank you. you. Great, uh, great. So now I'm really like, yeah, I really want to come through and slide. Um, Please. So growing up with the pizza, man, we in Chicago, so we got all styles uh -huh, available to sure. man for sure. of pizza. What's one of your favorite styles of pizza? Yeah. Well, it's worth noting that I grew up in the northwest suburbs, about 45 minutes outside of the city, uh -huh. um, in, like, Lake County area, specifically Hawthorne Woods. Uh, but right down the street from us was Mundelein, and there was a spot called Bill's Pub, and it was a classic, like, hole-in-the-wall kind of, like, almost like wilderness outdoorsy themed uh, Chicago Crackerton spot. Mm -hmm. They also did... Um, I guess it would be like a like a, a double dough or like in the pan style pizza. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different from deep dish pizza, but it was like the thicker version, right? right? Still, still cut pie cut mm -hmm. uh, in, into triangles or whatever. But they were known for the two styles. We'd always get both of them with more of an emphasis on the in the pan style. But I always liked more so the thin style, yeah. right? Um, and at the time, I remember I would only eat the exterior pieces because I said it had a handle mm. to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you know. 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 But, uh, but they're all delicious, and um, that was certainly one of my first pizza memories. Mm. And then coming into the city, we'd go to places like Pompeii mm -hmm. off Taylor Street in Little Italy. Okay. Uh, and that was some of my first, like, sheet pan or bakery pan style pizza uh, experiences, or even from pizza from D'Amato's off Grand Street. Okay. Um, and then, of course, uh, Lou Malnati's, Gino Z's. Mm. Uh, not not as hot on Giordano's, but respect yeah. to them, too, for doing Chicago Respectfully. stuff. Low-key, yeah. everybody native to Chicago, yeah. not really fans <laughs> of Giordano's, for real. It's really, like, for tourists. They got and us. On, they got our back, though, for, I'll like... I'll tell you... Tony Gemignani makes the best stuffed pizza I've ever had in my oh, life. Oh, yeah, they got it. You know, um, they do got it. We yeah. just got, like, it's so many. Everybody got their little pockets of pizza. 100%. Here, so. I feel like Giordano's, you know, and, and these might be fighting words, but they're probably one of those brands that, like, back in the day, yeah. if you had it back in the day, yeah, when you they was got at started, Giordano's, you it know was I mean? probably a really fantastic yeah. product. But such is the nature of the American dream and, you know, commerce yeah. and... You know, the economy, things get watered but down. But they got it on the tourist shit. Oh, yeah, they do. We're, we're, like, I They're meet well a placed. lot of people with, like, 
oh, where we should we go to eat? We got a list of people. They told right. us Giordano's, and I'm like, and everybody thinks that yep, they're deep dish ahead. and they're really stuffed, exactly, because they've got that extra layer of dough and then mm-hmm. the sauce rides on top of that. So it's really a different product, yeah, and it takes a lot more finesse. Yeah, yeah, I would say if you're gonna have a uh, deep dish, because again, people talk about Pequods too. I like Pequods a lot. It's not deep dish. That Chicago cast iron, mm. right? When they run the cheese to the edge like that and they proof the dough up, that is inherently different than deep dish mm. where they, pr- they they roll or sheet the dough out or, or they press it out with their hands and uh, manipulate it against the walls mm-hmm. of the pan so it's pressed up against the pan. That's Chicago deep dish. Mm. And that's what... Gino Z's does. That's what Lou Malnati's does. Mm. That's what Uno's does. That's what Duets does. That's what Arwardo's does. Gino's East is really good pizza. Paisano's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Those are Chicago. All deep those are spots. fire names too, though. Yeah. All those are like top 100%. Chicago spots too. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And then you know, crack it thin. You, you gotta go. Uh, yeah. You, you you gotta go Vito and Nick's. You gotta go to Pat's, Phil's. Connie's home run in. Connie's is fire uh, too. Yeah. You know, I hear Italian Fiesta. Italian Fiesta, uh, yeah, that's the hood you know, spot. I know, bro. I know. That's the hood <laughs> spot. You can't, you know what I mean? You can take Look, me one if of you hear them, you got to yeah. slide. Because yeah, if you're right, hearing about right. Italian Fiesta, we made it, y'all. We made it. Because we've Come been on, arguing on the sure. south side that Villa, Italian Fiesta. Don't Fies sleep together. on Villanova either, mm-hmm. which I think is really might be the best. Might be mm. the best. Villanova is incredible. See, I'm uh, from the south Stick- side. They're you... out in Stickney, Illinois. Mm, what the hell is that? That is like, I think that's like, what is that? So- maybe Southwest mm. or something. Damn. But they got it. I, I listen. I'll go with you to Italian Fiesta. You gotta yeah. come with me to. I'm down. We'll do that. I'm that'll be a follow down. up. Yeah, know? we could definitely. I don't know if there's a Patreon, that. but it's for the Patreon. Yeah, we could. Yes, there is a <laughs> fucking Patreon, and that could be for members only yeah, on the absolutely. YouTube channel. So absolutely. if y'all want to see that exclusive content, listen, you better buy the membership or the Patreon. I just knew he Patreon. was on the Patreon. Right? You already know it's good, I'm man. Trying to get there. Can't give everybody yeah. the sauce for the okay, free. Okay. Come on, now, nah, but. Um, that would be fire. Turn in, turn I'm in. from the South Side, and my all time favorite pizza, yeah, has been uh, Beggars G. Okay, Beggars, and that was another one you I was gonna, me? I'm gonna keep it a bean. Too. Yeah, that's it's, isn't that really the war is Italian Fiesta Beggars type shit on the South Side? And then the yeah. other war is Connie's um, uh, Home Run In. Yeah, but like Home those Run are In, the, though, it's like I mean, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. If you were on the basil piece and put it in the yeah. uh, freezer. And then a lot of people don't know that there's, and I've not been to the restaurant, but this other family, I think, or a different part of the family, licensed Vito and Nick's name, and they have a Vito and Nick's 2 restaurant, and Vito and Nick's 2 produces this frozen pizza mm. that I know you can get. I've seen it at Mariano's. I've seen it at Food Smart. Food Smart's right. got it all the time. Nice. But uh, one of the best. Yeah. Frozen Chicago. There's like a things. frozen Reggio's Pizza Factory on the South Side. Okay, so Reggio's shit. another one. Yeah, right? they got yeah. a little frozen. You know, yeah. you could buy them shit in the store. Do they have a location? They got a location, they like uh, and is that okay? Straight, on, like literally on Western. Yeah, way south, like and 111th people, or something one? People, like that. People talk about Armand's or. Uh, is it Ormans or um, I fucking know Aurelio's. Aurelio's is all right. Yeah, yeah that's some South Side yeah, shit yeah, too. Yeah. They good though. They got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I like. Uh, Nona's Foxes. Is I tried Nona's about? pizza recently. I like no, their like no, big ass slices. Okay, so you're talking about West Loop West attached Loop, to uh, mm, Four Mentos, yeah, that right? Little spot. Yeah, I fuck with that. Low key, they got a little my secret sauce when I was there. You know they what? weren't even doing any of hey, that look, shit until you know I was what? there. So it was a little. I, I, didn't, I didn't get. I didn't get any credit the bread, for that. But the bread and was a little let's just say, like. Let's just your, say you're welcome, Nona's. Nah, look. Yeah. It, <laughs> And you see why I'm telling you? Yeah, yeah, you just yeah, told me you yeah, spent your time. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. look, bro, I'm telling you, like, that's the look. That's why I'm like, you right there. I'm say less. <laughs> you can fact check me. <laughs> say less. Oh no, talk your shit. So look, yeah, yeah, that brings yeah. me into the next yeah. spot because it's pretty much a self-explanatory answer at this. But I kind of want to know the deets behind it. Uh huh. Your fucking pizza guru. You no one can tell you shit about pizza that you I don't almost about don't that, know. But I appreciate it. Thank you. How did you get the name Professor Pizza? For sure. For sure. So, uh, some years ago, I guess I've seven or so years ago, if if I'm right on that, I think it was like two thousand, whatever two thousand sixteen was, mm-hmm. maybe 
somewhere in there, 2016, 2017, I had my first opportunity to speak at DePaul, right? And at this time, I was working at Pauly G's, and I was just at the end of the bar one night uh, behind the bar and s- sitting there saying hello to patrons and struck up a conversation with this one guy, exchanged information. Some weeks later, I, I get a, a message from him, and he says, I've got this friend of mine. Um, he, he's, he works as a professor at DePaul. He's teaching this kind of intro to college in the city type course to get freshmen acclimated with just that college in the city right Mm. and he's looking for uh, a chef to come and speak to the class just about having a restaurant and you know Mm -hmm. food in chicago and yeah kind of can do whatever they want really yeah you know um would you be interested i had never done anything like that but i was like sure you know i knew at the very least, I didn't work want to work for somebody else for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, H- happy and grateful to do it at that period of my life, but I wanted to start to build something on my own. Yeah. Right. And I did it, and I spoke. I think just on being a, a professional cook in Chicago and um, working in the restaurant business and Chicago cuisine and and kind of my Italian American background and how I came to work in pizza and. The class loved it, and I did a little, like, Apple keynote presentation. Oh, right, fire. But, and part of it was just, like, I can't talk this whole time, this yeah. whole class. I got to have something. Yeah. So I'm playing, like, video, like, pizza videos and, like, whatever. Uh, but they liked it, and I got a chance to speak a couple more times there. And I can't remember if it was the first time I spoke there or or one of those um, other few follow-up times. Yeah. But either way, this was in the era of Instagram and social media where the algorithm was really rewarding uh, hashtags. Yeah. Or at least we were led to believe they were, right? Yeah. And so I came up with this hashtag just because I liked the alliteration and the way it sounded, uh, Professor Pizza. Mm. And I put that up with the photo I took with the class <laughs> at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, I took like a big selfie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but right? that's fire and fitting for what you right? were doing. And um, I uh, I had an uncle of mine reach out to me, and he said, you got to stick with that. You got something there. I didn't even know what he was talking about. I'm like, what do you mean? L- uh, like, you saw the post about me, like, yeah. talking in front of the class or whatever? He's like, yeah, yeah that, but, like, th- that Professor Pizza moniker, that's your name. That's your yeah. brand. And I'm like. That's not my brand. I'm like, I'm trying to be a chef. I'm trying to like take myself seriously at the time. But like really, I knew deep down I was like more zeroed in on pizza than anything. Mm -hmm. And the more I thought about it, I was like, I don't know why I am taking myself too seriously. Like pizza is something that inherently, like while I take it serious, it should it should inherently be a fun time. It is, yeah. Pizza's you know, normally a fun thing. It should be a fun, fun relaxed, easygoing time. And when you hear Professor Pizza, sometimes people hear the name and they don't even necessarily recognize that it's a pizzeria right off mm-hmm. the bat. They're just like, that's a cool name. That sounds no, it's fine. Right. It, it, does. it does. It um, does. <laughs> it does. And in my mind, you know, my name's... Anthony Scardino, Tony Scardino. There's a million guys out there, a million people out there with a vowel at the end of the name, you know, some bippity boppity boopity yeah. name like mine. Honestly, Tony Scardino pizza. is a fire name. And, like, if it I'm was not, Tony Scardino's, not, I'd pull up. Not bro, to I run away from lie. my name either, and that might happen. <laughs> I'm one not day. going front. That might happen. You know what I'm one day. That sounds fire. Right? Yeah, we ate at Scardino's. Hey, yo. But my thought was right off the bat to separate myself from the pack and not make myself or my restaurant just here's my name yeah you know restaurant yeah restaurant yeah you know, yeah, like, yeah 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 I feel, uh, you, I feel you i feel you i feel you and it was also based in the thought that like well I, i'm proud to be italian i really am italian american i have not been to italy mm-hmm. like let's go with something that is a little bit more italian american yeah 
uh, you don't want them to come through and be like, yeah, what the fuck is this? You know, right. I mean? I, you know people you ask me, just, own style. I, no, I don't speak the language. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm a little bit intimidated to start trying, but I really need to start trying. Yeah. I Duolingo. tried for a blip of time. You know, my daughter's doing Duolingo and every single it. day she shows me her progress. Oh, yeah. You got to do it. Text it to me and I'm so proud of I'm her. I'm learning Hindi right now. I'm like day That's 32. That's incredible. Hindi. Yeah. yeah, she's somewhere in the 30s right now with Spanish yeah. and I'm, I'm very... Uh, Hindi, I, how... How approachable oh, is that to pick yeah, up? Yeah, that's not my, my daughter's half South Indian. Okay, beautiful. So I'm trying to learn it so that way, like, she can learn it and be multilingual because her I mom knows three languages. I love that. Yeah, so that's amazing. Yeah. So you get a little bit of immersion too with it. That, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yep. I know that helps. So in I'm a big just way. trying to, and it also is just like, you know, if you can learn another language, why not? You know, next I'm going to do Spanish. 100%. 100% is doing Spanish. And yeah. uh, if I can know a couple of different languages, so when I'm able to, like, travel the world, because I hope yeah. to be able to travel the world, yeah. you're just not, like, completely lost and, like, pulling out 100%. your phone like a fucking American asshole. Like, 100%. Google I'm Translate. still that American asshole. I'm going to sure. be that American asshole until I learn these languages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Respect. I yeah, love Yeah, but it. no, definitely a fire name. That's one for the trademark books for thank sure, you, bro. Thank you got to keep that you. up. And I appreciate you inviting me over to come and just sit and talk this man. Great, this is, man this is amazing just to be able to pick your brain and shit like that especially because pizza is my favorite food like people still ask me to this I day like that. on my birthday i just want to eat pizza I you love feel that. me like I everyone wants to go out and i'm like gee well i, I can only hope you celebrate a birthday i'm celebrating my soon. birthday at professor pizza I love this that, year 100 we'll percent for you i am 100 percent celebrating my birthday that. at professor pizza because y'all just don't know the honey with the look Y'all don't understand. We got a few moves. Look, y'all don't understand. We got understand. a few tricks up our sleeve, <laughs> Look, for sure. y'all just don't understand what's going on. Yeah. You feel me? I would not have brought this man on this pod <laughs> if this pizza wasn't life-changing. Like, this pizza hits it. different. You understand? Um, but just um, before we close out, man, it, it sounds like you've been you've had an incredible story, uh, an incredible life, trials, tribulations. Um I just kind of want to get a little bit about you because I didn't work in, like, no fine dining restaurants, uh-huh. but I worked in some pretty, like, uh, high volume, essentially restaurants, like IGM, sure. Chipotle's downtown oh, for a while and shit like that. But one thing that I always ran into was... Not a lot of people can do that sort of Oh, bro, either. it was insane, bro. You were like, back in house front? No, I was the general manager. Oh, so really? I would, Chipotle? Yeah, so I general managed Chipotle's. I started as, like, crew. What My my, my best guy used to be a GM of, uh, of uh, Chipotle, yeah. and... Uh, you know they raise them right there. Oh yeah, man. For Standards sure. for sure. For I mean, sure. it's not like a re- it's not like a fine dining restaurant, but just hospitality standards. And I'll still eat at Chipotle from time to oh, time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good restaurant. It does bro. a number on me, but <laughs> yeah, to go through you, but but you know when you do it right, and uh, you you know we were seeing numbers of, I mean, somewhere of twenty thousand a day. Yeah. You know, a I, day. Yeah. I'm talking. What lo- what location? I did, I, so I I GM'd a couple locations. State and Madison. Okay. Uh, I helped yeah, like. any of those downtown Oh, ones. word, bro. It was insane. I helped like uh, service manage when I was younger, um, like Franklin and Lake, which yeah. was like super high volume. We broke like a almost a record. We made like, uh, what was it? 279 I, I customers I used to always hear about hour. that. uh the Michigan Avenue one, like oh, they would do like buddy. ten thousand just during their lunch period yep. or something. That's what I'm saying. Some people don't realize how many these high numbers that we yeah. used to see, like just volume of and just take like some of these, you know, you know, tweezer fine dining cooks and put oh, them yeah. there and see oh, if yeah, they can they hold did, their own. They too. did. They did sprinkle in some like. Yeah. You know, they pay him some money. Some of them would make it. No, but it, I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it ended up, what I learned was that the people bred from within yeah. and, like, believed in. Okay, they were the ones who could really. Yeah, because they hold preached their own. a lot about, like, you can make this as a career. Yeah. And when I was leaving college and I started there, they hired me right out the gate. Yeah, there we go. That was a big ass fucking air fighter flying through. Jesus. That's what we're hearing. But they Proud pitched. Proud to be in America. <laughs> yeah, America. <laughs> What is a kilometer? Uh, <laughs> but they really preached that vision of, like, growing through the company and shit. Yeah. And my, you know, I was like, fuck it, all right. And then I ended up being really good at it and, like, urgency in the kitchen and yes. shit like that. And mm-hmm. I was able to be promoted after two months, then got another for two, you. a year. <laughs> and then they were like, fuck it. They had me open one on 63rd and Halstead, one on 87th and the okay. Dan Ryan. Like, so they, they literally told me, like, yo, we need, like, a black manager to go do this because – they were getting reception from the neighborhoods like, 
y'all going to bring a white guy to come here for and sure. we need jobs. For and sure. so I was like, yeah, I'll go. Which is which is valid, It was by valid, the way. G. It was valid. Yeah. <clears throat> but I fucked with it, and I was like, gee, I'll go represent. I'm literally, like, down the street from the shit yeah. anyway. So yeah. it's like, cool, whatever. They yeah. can't say shit to me. You right. know, so worked out and shit. Get to meet the CEO and all that shit, but food really? did a he, yeah hell yeah it did a no I was like twenty one GM and Chipotle G, but it did Can a I huge ask, number. It, was it just always that you wanted to do something else, or were you just like burnt out uh, on it eventually? You know what? I was lit off the fact that I was like young, making a good buck, but I was conscious to the fact that I was being used yeah. and wasn't being paid for what I was doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? There were times like as an apprentice GM. And there's no there's no room to there's negotiate. No, there's more. no room to negotiate. You feel me? It's yeah. really just kind of like, yeah, but you know, you're a risk because you're younger. And it's like, yo, I ain't showed y'all no risk in like three years. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, like, yeah. So it was things like that that like I was very, very conscious of and the workload that I put in. Did they try and keep you when you finally left? Uh, You know what? We left kind of sour because yeah. I had like a district manager who she kind of built a career off of like, parading me around like yeah. i was really good at what i did what i did yeah, yeah, you feel yeah. me and i opened these restaurants for these people they were for successful sure. 21 i was passing their tests their eco shirts like unheard of things passing tests for other stores i didn't even work at like they would call me when they would get an audit wow to like go to their store so they were genuinely like they fu- majorly they me. undervaluing you a hundred percent undervaluing me. my yeah. mom would even tell me that like i was losing a lot of sleep and, uh, you know, I was trying to take a vacation once and my manager didn't want me to take that vacation. And I was like, nah, that's not right. Like, I put too much time in and I'd be able to take my vacation. So I was taking it anyway. Yeah. And she's on my phone yapping at me for the first time, like really yapping at me. And I was yeah. just like, you know what, forget it. <clears throat> but I took an interview with like Starbucks. They paid me like 20000 more to sit on my ass. Yeah. Like, I did nothing. For sure. <laughs> you know, and I was, like, home every day at, like, 3 o'clock. For sure. Because <laughs> the rush is in the morning for coffee. Right. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, and, like, yeah. every blue moon in the afternoon. So yeah, it was, yeah. like, I learned that, like, there were other jobs that could pay you more for your skill sets. And right. then that's how I learned I'm really good at hospitality. Right. So I kept my career in hospitality. Because sure. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy, yeah. you know. Serving, you know, being, you know, having great mannerisms with people. So There's an art to it. It's a real good art to it, and I like, I like it. I like being able to. It's not too many people that really want to be a good person for other people to have a good time, right? You know, so I like being on that back end of like, you know, I helped someone have a great night, a memorable night. You know, it makes me go home good, and I go home paid pretty good for being able to provide a great right. night for people. That's awesome. So that's what I enjoy doing the most. You know, right now. Um, I, I really enjoy hospitality in general. I did think at one point uh, restaurants was what I was going to be because they had rest a, a restaurant tour position, mm-hmm. which was next after GMing, where I would just oversee a bunch of restaurants. Yeah, it would take a little which more sounds work. Sounds like you were already doing was, for them that's, anyways. That's kind of the like, point. I was like, bro, I was already doing yeah. what you guys are asking me to do. I'm fixing numbers. I'm fixing drawers. Yeah. I'm fixing staff lines, training, yeah. hiring. You know, I sat and hired. Sat through 3,100 people to hire right. for 63rd in Austin. Right. Like I was doing major work for this company that yeah. I was not getting I was not getting compensated for, for real, for real. Um, years later, Ch- Chipotle got a lawsuit that they ended up having to pay out everybody that was in my position during those years because we were... Did you benefit from that? I did benefit from Amazing. it. Amazing. It was maybe like a couple hundred after the huge payout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was more symbolic It than was anything. definitely like... All right, I wasn't fucking crazy. Like no, that's how I felt. Sure, you feel me? Sure. And my mom was like, "I told you, I told for you, you sure. better get your fucking money." Yeah. For sure. Um. So, did you ever run into those times where you just felt, you know, burnt out and undervalued? You absolutely. That's why I left the industry entirely for yeah. a while uh, and went into commercial real estate. Yeah. Um, and, and even even after I came back, like it it, it took a lot for me to find Grant. Yeah. You know, and for him to really like put gasoline on my dreams and 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 make sure that they could come to life. Mm. And then the second wave of that was me um uh partnering with the folks uh Grant as well, uh, partnering with the folks uh at 5050 Hospitality. Mm-hmm. Uh and they are who I've I've linked up with to open up the Old Town location. Nice. Right? So it, it took, it, I always tell people, when I started making pizzas at home for friends and family, that was like roughly 15 years ago, yeah. right? And now I've got 
two locations, and one of them's like a proper brick and mortar location, yeah. right? So it took that long, yeah. You know, a real grind. No such thing as an overnight success, yeah. Um, and in that time, you run into a lot of people that you know treat you goofy and and take advantage, and sometimes some of those people come around after the fact. Mm-hmm. after you've kind of proven yourself with people that legitimately did give you the opportunity and they say, okay, hey, is it not too late? And and in a lot of times it is too late. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you strike a deal with them, but you remind them that yesterday's price is not today's price. Facts. You know? I'm not so, the same guy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and some of those people, like, I'm friends with, too. Yeah. And some of those people I'm not friends with, yeah. you know? And f- some of those people I might still do deals with. Yeah. It just depends. So it's like... There's always room for business if the if the exchange is correct, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, I mean, there's even folks that I've beefed with for years and, like, in the last, like, two weeks rekindled with, and I'm not even going to say who, but, mm. like, uh, I'm grateful that, you know, we're linked up again because... You know, even if we only talk a couple times a year, we're we're stronger together than we yeah. are apart. Timing you know? is everything as so, well. So, and yeah. you can't do that with everybody. No. Um, no. And it's not worth doing that with everybody. But, like, certainly, yeah, there's a lot of false promises in this industry. Yeah. And a lot of used and abused talent. And I, I think that's true in a lot of fields of passion. Yeah. You know, um, I think... Actors experience that. I think musicians experience that. Mm-hmm. I think. You I know, think any job painters. I think, you know, yeah. any any sort of creative arts, um, y- you're you're going to be undervalued, maybe forever, um, uh, until, hopefully, you get that opportunity. Yeah, my my hopefully. uncle once told me that his grandmother told him, or one of his uh, like older, you know, he was trying to transfer from one of his jobs he was at and. One of his supervisors once told him, like, when you're good at your job, unfortunately, you get used. And that was his scenario, like, you're being used. So I think, you know, sometimes you, if you are listening to this and you're an inspiring chef, you want to be a restaurant owner or podcaster or whatever you're doing, if you feel like you're being used nine times out of ten, you're really good at your job. And, uh, you know, it might just take a different scenario for you or whatever it may be. But, you know, recognize your talents and definitely use them to your capacity. hundred um, percent. And last question for you, man, just before we get out of here. For sure. You've been doing such a great job up until this point. Where do you see yourself, you know, ten years from now, um, Professor Pizza? Like, what do you see? What is What is some of these, like, in goals that you have or just 10 years from now like what do you think you want to do yeah i mean right now like pizza is super central to my story and i think it'll always be super central to my story but i hope to get into other things as well yeah you know i've got a huge love for comedy i hope i'm exploring that more and more yeah i hope the podcast i hope that's really funny absolutely yeah um you know the podcast is a, is a huge goal of mine in this coming year, and we're taking some real leaps and bounds on it right now, which I'm excited about. Yeah, um, I'm excited to do it with my buddy Henry Kai. Um, I want to do a lot with Frozen Pizza. Nice. I want to open up different locations, um, and and not all the same. I, I want them to be different variations of kind of the greater Professor Pizza universe, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know. We talked about my time at Dobro's. The restaurants that I have right now lend either more to a carry-on delivery experience or a sit-down experience. They don't really lend to a slice experience. Mm. We will start to play around more with the slice model for happy hour and things of that nature, but they're really not built out as slice operations. Right, right. And my hope is to get soon... Uh, and I don't know how soon it'll happen. I'm not teasing anything in particular, but sooner rather than later, uh, a location in the city that is ideal for slaying and slices and yep. doing a proper slice business and some more of those Italian American facets, whether it's you know the uh, groceries or dry goods or it's just subs and cookies and cannolis and you know expansion uh, maybe somewhat of a bar maybe not it it really just depends maybe a drive-through if the scenario is perfect maybe a little wine but uh (laughs) 100 percent, right yeah but uh it's 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 a real estate game and you got to find the right spot to do it so 
you know, we got to be patient. Yeah. But um, I have no doubt yeah. that Professor Pisa will be propelled yeah. to see how far they can stretch it. I appreciate that. <laughs> and more than any of that, I just want to be able to spend some time with my kids, travel, cook, experience the world, and I'm sure all of that's in my future. Yeah, you know? of course, 100%, so, man. Yeah. Well, sounds like you've been on the grind, living your life right the way you've been, you should be, and uh, you just can continue to ask for the you know the best grace that you can get and keep working hard at it, man. I mean, your pizza is great. I totally recommend it. It's got my stamp if it matters to anybody, but that is some great pizza. Um, what you're doing is great. The aesthetic you're building is great. The name, the image, everything is an yeah. amazing uh, piece to the pie, no pun intended. Um, so I appreciate you coming to the session podcast, brother. Thank you. Thank you for taking I this time. I appreciate you. Um, we're going to get out Thanks of here. For me. Yeah, for sure. Professor Pieces of the session, we're signing out. So.